Hello everybody. Um, I hope you're all feeling well um, and, uh, and not as cold as I am in Scotland where summer has not quite hit. We're moving on today to another topic which I love which is our older cats and um, so we've got five presentations lined up for this month and this is the very first one. And I have got a bit of a confession to start off with. Uh, we did receive a, a couple of requests for um, questions to cover and um, I, it completely slipped my mind. So the questions that have already been posed, if they're not answered in this webinar, I apologise, but of course we'll make sure they are covered in subsequent ones. So uh, apologies for not being quite up to date on that. As usual, if you'd like a copy of the slides, drop me an email or put a request in the chat box and we'll have some questions after or anyway where you can ask whatever you would like and I will do my very best to answer. So what I would like to cover in this presentation really is a little bit about how we define a cat's age um, according to their, their age in our years but what does that mean in terms of their life stage and when therefore we might say this is an old or older cat. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit as well about the what I would call the physiological changes that happen as a cat ages. In other words changes within the body that uh, might affect our older cats and are relevant for uh, cat owners and carers to know about and then lead on to some general care tips for older cats. In some of the subsequent uh, meetings that we've got set up for later this month I'll be talking about specific issues like arthritis, cognitive dysfunction, also healthcare screening tests as well so there's there's a big it's a big topic overall but this is hopefully just a, a nice introduction to everything and to start off with um, when is a cat old is I think a really great question to ask and if you go to your supermarkets and look at the pet food there and look for the senior pet foods you'll see the ages that are on the packets probably vary a little bit and often they might seem to be uh, I would say as a speaking as an owner quite young in terms of uh, considering a cat older if it's seven when we know that many cats live to be 20 seems a, seems to be something a little bit wonky about that so I think that it's a it's a useful topic to spend a little bit of time talking about and thankfully um, a charity international cat care probably a charity that many of you will have heard of have some years ago they actually came up with this life stage chart um, and in fact it's been slightly updated um, because it originally I think went up to a cat being about 20 years old and now it goes up to a cat being 25 years old but as you can see from this chart um, we've got a number of things being shown so firstly on the left hand side we've got what each of these different life stages are called from our kitten through to the oldest category which is the super senior and in fact the super senior uh, until a couple of years ago was referred to as geriatric in this chart um, but I think quite rightly it's been changed to super senior in that the term geriatric um, was I think negatively received by many people um, and I definitely understand why because it, it doesn't sound a very positive term to use. Geriatric, uh, I think it doesn't conjure up the right uh, mental picture of an old cat that is doing very well, that is thriving and so they now have christened this area the super senior which I think is lovely because it really celebrates those older cats. So we've got the life stage down the left and then in the next column we've got the age of cat that corresponds to each of these life stages so you'll see for example a kitten is up to six months and then there's this junior category um, and then in the third column we've got a human equivalent age and I think this is also really lovely because it helps to um, I think inform our understanding of the older cat if we have some sort of parallel that means something to us and I would agree with the the suggested ages on this chart uh, in that for example it's suggested that a 15 year old cat is equivalent to a person who's 76 years old and an 11 year old cat equivalent to a person who's 60 years old so um, those I think are numbers that make sense to me based on what I know about cats and what I know about people and from an older cat perspective really it's the seniors and the super seniors that we're primarily interested in 
the mature age category, um, that seven to 10 year old category, I've included in my box on the right, because that's, I think, a good time to start thinking about preventative health care for older cats, because many illnesses of older cats will start to develop quite gradually and they can start start to develop when the cat's in that age group but many old cat illnesses if we're looking at how common they are it's really the seniors and the super seniors uh, that we're thinking of so cats aged 11 years and over which is equivalent to a person 60 years and over so next on my list of things to talk about was really what happens as our cat ages and, and talk a little bit about this. And today, really, the focus will be on what I would call physiological changes. So changes in the body system and the way that the body works that just will happen to probably all cats to some extent and that do have an impact, but they're not illnesses as such. The pathological um, changes or, or the pathological um, opportunities uh, should I say, are the illnesses to which old cats are more vulnerable. And that includes things like chronic kidney disease and hypertension, to mention a couple of topics we've talked about in previous cat cafes. And I'll talk more about those, those illnesses starting next week so that uh, you can hear more about, well, what are those illnesses and exactly how common are they? What, uh, what do I need to worry about? But looking firstly at the physiological changes, um, to, to start with, um, these changes typically are very gradual and very subtle. They just gradually creep up on the cats over a period of time. And they include things like uh, a reduced sense of taste and smell, which can affect appetite. And actually, in, in many cats, um, they're so good at training us, their carers, um, that we compensate for this uh, very readily. So typically, for example, uh, we will find that our older cats are very good at somehow persuading us to buy more premium and delicious cat foods as they get older, because we've noticed perhaps the cat food that they were originally eating all their life is maybe less exciting. And that that's because of this reduced sense of taste and smell. Reduced hearing, um, often a feature as well. Um, that can be for a number of reasons. Wax accumulation in the ears, which of course very treatable, uh, can be an issue with older cats, but also just uh, ev everything in the body is starting to, to wear out a bit. So that can affect hearing a bit. Um, reduced vision, um, again, there are a number of reasons behind that. Um, but often we see older cats having also, uh, this doesn't necessarily affect their eyesight, but the iris, the colored bit of their eye can look quite lacy and look quite thin so they might find bright light a little bit harder to adapt with as a consequence of that. Then we have some consequences affecting the musculoskeletal system and I'm talking more about osteoarthritis later this month but just a heads up here that uh, older cats tend to lose muscle condition, they may have um, some vulnerabilities with their, their joints related to thinning of the cartilage. Um, there are these degenerative changes that are happening as, as their life progresses in a similar way to I think uh, the sort of changes that are seen in ourselves as we age. Other things to point out, uh, well cats, I, I mentioned in one of my previous sessions that cats are not always as good at drinking as they should be. In other words, they uh, they, they tend not to drink um, as much uh, voluntarily as we might wish them to. And this is partly because um, as desert dwelling creatures originally, that's where they, they came from in evolutionary terms, um, they're very well adapted to coping with very little water and they have these amazing kidneys that have far fewer nephrons, functional uh, units of the kidney than other species like ourselves and dogs. Uh, but these individual nephrons are very, very good at conserving fluid, keeping fluid in the body. So normally cats don't need to drink very much and they pass a small volume of very concentrated urine every day. As we know, older cats are vulnerable to kidney problems, but also older cats, their, their um, trigger or their stimulus for thirst is often not as potent. So older cats tend to be a little bit more vulnerable to becoming dehydrated. And as a carer, the relevance to that is to make sure that there are always plenty of water bowls in your home, that your older cat that perhaps also may be forgetful in their old age, as we'll talk about in another session, needs to be able to sort of see their water sources easily. So there's no excuse for them not to drink. And indeed, if, if we do find that they are having problems, then there may be specific 
specific tactics which we need to employ to help them stay hydrated and that was a topic of a previous cat cafe as well so if you weren't here for that uh, feel free to look at the recording of that one on the website they tend to also have a, a reduced ability to, to digest fats and proteins, so they, they're less good at getting the nutrients out of the food. And again, um, in many ways, they, they're very good at compensating for that by eating more. So if your cat is offered either ad lib food or you respond to its, its uh, requests for food, shall we say, and its body condition is good, then what that tends to happen is just that as they get older, you find you may be feeding them a a little bit more or perhaps higher quality food that is easier for them to digest and perhaps has a, a better source of nutrients in it. So it isn't doesn't tend to result in weight loss um, unless you have perhaps a very competitive household where there are more than one cat and perhaps the older cat is needing to maybe not fight for its food but you know there's a bit of competition for food and if that's the case then you may uh, see some weight loss if, if your older cat is not able to access the food they need but again I think in general cats are very good at training us as their carers so that these sort of issues don't really arise but perhaps worth mentioning if you do have a particularly busy household that just make sure your older cats get access to the food as much as they want to. Um, reduced immune function also can be a feature so older cats like older people can be more vulnerable to infections where that's an issue. And skin, coat and nail changes. So very common for older cats to um, shed their nails less easily and the nails can become quite thickened. Um, as you can see in, in this example here, the, the, the outer nail has not really been shed. So this nail is now quite thickened and they then can become very vulnerable to overgrowing and actually poking into uh, one of the feet, feet pads. And this is often something that can really creep up on you as well. So um, you do, I, I think it's worth keeping it, an eye on your cat's paws. If your cat comes to sit with you or on you, just have a little feel of the feet um, because I've had this happened to me as well where it's difficult to spot particularly if you have a very hairy cat very fluffy cat um, but if left unattended the nails can actually grow into the pad and I, I've got a photo a little bit later to show you what that looks like but as you would imagine quite quite painful so a little bit of help with nails we'll talk about that later on um, and then lastly in terms of the physiological changes often changes related to the brain and uh, as a consequence affecting behavior and we're talking uh, we'll talk later this month about cognitive dysfunction syndrome which is the cat equivalent of alzheimer's disease where the cat may suffer from forgetfulness forget uh, also some of their learned behavior like how to use a litter tray um, and that therefore can benefit from support so for our, our mature cat, the seven to 10 year old, actually these changes, although they're starting to happen, probably are not at a level where it actually has significant consequences on cats overall. And in fact, um, from a health perspective, often uh, the sorts of things that we worry about in, in the vet clinics in these cats would be them becoming overweight because they may be less active than they were in younger years and still eating the same amount of food. Dental disease, always very common in this sort of age group as well. Um, but it is a time where some of these older cat health problems may be starting to develop. And therefore, there is an advantage to uh, get your mindset into keeping perhaps a, a little more vigilant for them, um, looking out for some of the signs of, of those common illnesses and monitoring the cat in some of the ways that I'll talk about in a, a later webinar in this little series. The health problems though typically will appear much more commonly in the seniors and the super seniors and as a very rough guide I would say as a vet probably about a third of apparently healthy 11 to 14 year olds um, have actually got underlying illnesses and more than half of apparently healthy 15 year and over the super senior age category have got uh, underlying health issues and some of those underlying health issues don't necessarily need medicines to to sort them out but they may benefit from uh, changes to the home environment so things like mobility problems related to osteoarthritis which we'll talk more about it in in a later session but other illnesses of course like hypothyroidism chronic kidney disease do benefit from more uh, specific medical support 
and because these illnesses often develop very gradually very slowly it can be hard to spot them until they become quite serious um, but there are some some clues some useful hints that I can give you to help you spot them at an earlier stage and in general the earlier you can spot something and treat it then of course the best chance you have of managing it well and, and perhaps even uh, preventing things from progressing so let's uh, finish off with some general tips for um, uh, care of older cats and the first tip definitely won't come as a surprise to those of you that have regularly attended these sessions which is if you've not already got a set of scales at home that you can use to monitor your cat's weight then I think it's really worth investing in some scales and typically you can get these online um, for around about £30 um, so they are relatively inexpensive they seem quite reliable in terms of the ones that I have bought online I test their accuracy by getting out some tins from my kitchen cupboard I know the weight of the tin and therefore I can put on five tins and see if it the weight that it records them at is, uh, is the correct weight um, and it's sensible just to keep an eye on your scales in terms of long term doing that from time to time to make sure that they do seem to be reading the correct weight because no piece of equipment is absolutely foolproof in terms of frequency of weight monitoring, it does depend on the age of your cat and also the health status of your cat as to what would be considered appropriate. Um, I don't want to encourage you to, to be worried about your cats and thinking that you need to, to take their weight measurement every week, for example. Um, so I've put some guidelines on here and I think up to the age of 11, really once a year is probably enough for most cats, unless you've got a concern. Obviously, whenever you're concerned, always check with your vets and this would be the time also to get the scales out if you think there's been any sort of change. With the senior cats aged 11 to 14 years I've suggested twice a year and whenever concerned and then your 15 year old and over again if you think your cat seems perfectly fine then I'd say every two to three months is, is probably acceptable and of course if you see a change if there is a reduction in weight compared to the time before the main thing to do is to not just say okay well I've done the weight and I'll do it again in two to three months but if you see a downward change anything you're worried about contact your vet but also think about rechecking that weight um, at an earlier stage rather than leaving it too long because uh, you, that's the whole point of the exercise. And then cats with chronic health illnesses, it really does depend a bit on the illness that you're dealing with and um, what the cat's uh, current status is with respect to that. I would say it's quite rare for me to say to, to an owner that weighing their cat once a day is sensible. That would be the sort of thing I would reserve for hospitalised cats where I'm wanting to monitor them very closely if I'm very worried about them. But I may say once a week for some cats with chronic kidney disease where we've been trying to encourage appetite and support weight gain if they've lost a lot of weight. Um, but then when things are perhaps improved, it may just be once a month to keep an eye on things. So it will depend a little bit. And as, as always, talk to your vet about what feels an appropriate, uh, sensible way of monitoring your cat uh, given their condition. When should you worry about um, weight changes in your cat? Well, really in the older cat, we're talking about weight decreases uh, weight gain obesity definitely is another health concern but I'll leave leave saying anything about that uh, today um, today the focus really is in the older cats where we're really interested in weight loss and I think my key message would be that if the weight has come down um, then uh, it's you know it, it's something that should not be ignored and at the very least it should be monitored to see if that is real and persistent um, but of course course if there is anything else concerning you that is the time to pick up the phone and speak to your vets about any concerns that you have. If you're monitoring your cats longer term as in if you've got several background readings and they're all very similar you know six months ago my cat was four kilos three months ago they were four kilos today they're 3.8 kilos well then there's a change there and that uh, certainly should be viewed as uh, significant. Um, also if it's significant really if your cat has lost muscle condition uh, I'll show you a, a schematic image in just a few slides about how you can uh, assess muscle condition in your cat. Um, also another tool that we use is called body condition scoring and this is where um, of course weight tells you 
some information, um, but uh, more important is actually is the weight appropriate for the frame of the cat that we're looking at. And uh, a Maine Coon cat, for example, they're a very large breed, a healthy Maine Coon might, might be seven or eight kilos, whereas for a domestic short hair, if they were seven or eight kilos, they would be very, very overweight. So the body condition score puts into context the weight records and you will find if you if you google various charts um, this one I've included was one that Purina created but the the drawings will be the same on all the charts that you get um, we uh, used to most often do a five point grading scheme for body condition score so it's one to five but in more recent years it's been more um, uh, seems to be more popular to use a nine point scale which is this one and I can see that the type is is obviously very very small so I've just expanded the, the too skinny and the too fat readings for, the, for this slide but you'll see basically they've got um, a, an aerial view of a cat so looking down on your cat from above um, and also looking at your cat side on some guidelines that then tell you how to interpret your, your, your cat's body condition and whether they are an optimal weight or whether they perhaps are a little bit thin or a little bit fat or very thin or very fat um, and so the idea one uh, on this slide here so you can see um, that uh, the cat has has got a waist you can feel the ribs the word uh, palpable means that you can feel it um, and this would be what our healthy cat body condition is but going back to weight um, if your cat has lost weight and you've not put it on any sort of weight loss regime then even if it's come from being very overweight to still a little bit overweight if you've not been doing anything like feeding that cat a weight weight loss diet um, i would be worried about that so don't don't celebrate a perhaps a, a very fat cat losing weight unless it's been with your interventions hopefully that's uh, i'm making that clear and then I also mentioned muscle condition scoring. So this is where we feel over the muscles um, to see, well, um, can we get some idea of how much muscle mass there is? And this is a schematic that, that I borrowed from a, a um, journal article where you can see the finger pressing on the skin and below the skin there's there is a layer of fat that of course if you've lost uh, weight might be very thin um, and then there's the muscle um, and we can see a reasonably uh, chunky amount of muscle here and then uh, the bone underneath so feeling over uh, either side of your your cat's uh, backbone for example or on the limb muscle or the muscle over the, the scapula which is the the, um, the shoulder blade um, you can feel uh, the muscle through the skin and get an idea as to whether your cat's muscle condition is is good or poor and of course the ideal is to feel your cat when they're they're healthy and get an idea of what it should feel like normally and then with time you will be able to see if there is a change that is is more concerning and if your cat does lose any muscle mass that's always worrying because muscles very very difficult to build back up so if you think your cat has lost muscle mass um, and you think that's happening quite quickly I would definitely not hesitate to get in touch with your vets because uh, there may be something uh, going on which is is burning through through your cat and uh, leading to that muscle loss back to the nails now so I mentioned nails often are thicker less easily shared uh, also the cats are, their ability to retract their nails is not so good so nails can get caught up in uh, carpet and soft furnishings so it's really a good idea to uh, whatever age cat you have to try and get them used to you feeling their feet and looking at their nails which not every cat really likes so it may take a little bit of time and a few little treats and just doing one toe at a time uh, to be able to do this um, but if you feel the foot pad underneath the nail and, and just uh, press on that gently the nail should come out and you can see it um, and these are all examples of overgrown nails and the worst example is that the poor one the bottom left where you can see the nail here is actually um, growing into that foot pad and there's a nasty infection there um, and this cat um, you know it's going to be very sore walking on on those nails but similarly we've got a nail here just about to go into a foot pad again here as well and this is you know very common it's uh, it, and cats are so good at hiding signs of illness and discomfort if it's sore walking around they'll just walk a little bit less so we do need to look out for this 
and of course if you do see problems with nails um, then trimming them is is the way to go and this is something that um, you may at, at some point or other feel uh, one willing to take on yourselves but uh, you should always get some training from your vets as to how to do this or from your groomer as to how to do this safely. Um, nails in cats um, are not always clear and unpigmented but this is a picture here of a cat where you can see the nail there's no pigment in it in other words it's not a black nail and that means that we can see actually the, the what's called the quick where all the blood vessels are um, at the top of the nail and uh, won't come as a surprise that of course you don't want to trim the nail through that bit because you will have a, a lot of bleeding and potentially quite sore for your cat so if you can see uh, the quick on the nail then you can trim it relatively high um, because you can just place your, your clippers in a way that you know you're not going to go through that quick um, but you can go a little bit higher up if you have a cat with a very dark pigmented nail and you cannot see the quick um, then you need to be a bit more conservative and so the technique that we use is to go parallel with the bottom level of the nail and so if you go parallel to there and a bit lower as you can see you're not going to cut into the quick but as I say, that's something you, you shouldn't do without having had some discussion and training from uh, a relevant uh, professional. Small nail trimmers as well. Really, you can get some really nice little nail trimmers, which are, of course they need to be sharp so that they can do the job effectively. Um, and then if you do decide to take this on, on at home, it's worth bearing in mind that a lot of cats will prefer you not to do all of their nails in one sitting they might just be quite happy for you to do one foot or perhaps even worst case one or two nails at a time um, and to get the cat used to the technique it's it's uh, useful to practice getting the the nail retracted by uh, pressing on or getting the nail extended rather by pressing on that foot pad to, to extend the nail out so the cat gets used to that sort of sensation which is not at all painful um, and then a little tip that uh, i have heard as well is in terms of the noise of the nail clip uh, is to get some dry spaghetti and trim that next to your cat and it does make a noise very much like trimming the nail and of course trimming the nail if we avoid the quick as I've said is not painful in any way it is just literally taking off this uh, th this um, keratin which is you know has no sensation so it's not a painful procedure but a lot of cats don't really like their, their toes being fiddled with hence it being just something to do a few few nails at a time depending on your cat and how they tolerate it grooming support as well older cats often appreciate a little bit more support there um, depending also on on their breed and also whether they've got health problems like arthritis that might make it difficult for them to turn around and groom themselves as effectively um, so depending on your own cat you will you will get to know their needs but if they're a long-haired cat it's really sensible to get them used to having their coat brushed at an early stage so that when they really need that support as they get older uh, they'll be happy to have it uh, at home from you. Toileting accidents we, we spoke about uh, last time and so there's obviously a whole session on that but of course older cats are more vulnerable to toileting accidents um, because they have a number of health issues that contribute to that which include often illnesses that make them more thirsty and need to go to the toilet more frequently. They are more vulnerable also to bacterial infections, um, bacterial cystitis. Um, they may have dementia which means they forget uh, where their little boxes or they may have arthritis which makes it painful to use a cat flap or go down the stairs to, to use their litter box so all these things can contribute to toileting accidents and as a reminder I, I would say just uh, as per last week um, I think it, the kind thing to do particularly when your cat reaches the age of 11 and over is even if they prefer to go outside to the garden to uh, to go to the toilet in your flower bed um, it's kind to offer them the option of a litter box so that if they're feeling a bit more fragile uh, they don't have to go outside and that you have 
an acceptable toileting location in your house rather than suffering a toileting accident which obviously can be uh, frustrating smelly unpleasant etc uh, etc et to deal with and this slide just a reminder of some of the the features of what I was saying ideal litter box so for an older cat important that it's low sided in terms of access and a nice sandy consistency litter which is comfortable for them to stand on um, so but listen to that other webinar if, if this is something that's of a further their interest to you. Older cats, when they get ill, may need a little bit of extra support. Um, tempting uh, for appetite, just some general tips here to include. So little and often is the key uh, with all cats. Um, having things that are a bit, uh, bit more aromatic, uh, a bit warmed up can be helpful. Um, remembering that cats prefer metal and glass um, and uh, ceramic dishes rather than plastic. Um, for the most part and they generally don't like their whiskers to touch the side of bowls so having a shallow bowl is helpful and of course location important as well not, not in too busy an area of the house or where your older cat might feel a little bit uh, vulnerable to perhaps uh, traffic or other things uh, getting in the way of, of them being able to eat. Um, if your cat's having a poor appetite then in the short term there is there is no problem in my opinion for them to have some chicken or some fish prawns tuna etc um, I would always cook the chicken uh, rather than, than feed that raw same with the same with the fish I know raw feeding is is quite popular in some quarters but definitely for my older cat and if it's unwell I would I would be wanting to cook it um, hand feeding slightly warming the food all these sorts of things are helpful but of course contact your vet because poor appetite can have really significant health impacts and complete loss of appetite where a cat stops eating completely actually can trigger potentially fatal consequences quite quickly so don't hesitate if your cat's appetite is you know has completely gone that is more or less a medical emergency but poor appetite as well don't let it uh, go on for too long before seeking advice even if it's just over the phone initially and if you are going to tempt your cat with foods that are not standard cat foods just beware of some of the things that can be poisonous to cats things like onions and garlic so if you are for example wanting to feed some fresh cooked chicken to your cat um, then if you're buying that from your supermarket just make sure you don't buy um, one that has been marinated in, in garlic and onion for example because the, although that is delicious for us um, it has potential health consequences to cats it can cause uh, an anemia um, which uh, can in, in severe cases be life-threatening so obviously we, we don't want to do that drinking as well we, we uh, mentioned briefly earlier on cats older cats not having quite as good a thirst reflex um, but this too was a subject in detail at a previous cat cafe so the recording of that is on the website but there are lots of things you can do to try and encourage drinking in older cats if, if they if they genuinely need that and it's another reason why in an older cat as well I would prefer a diet that includes wet food rather than being exclusively dry food because you've got a little bit more of a safety net in terms of fluid intake. Stimulation I think is really important in cats so as with ourselves we're told you know to do the crossword play sudoku and scrabble to keep our our mental abilities going into old age and the same I think broadly the same analogies for cats so stimulation uh, might be with toys it might be just looking out of a window but for that older cat with arthritis make it easy for the cat to get to the window perhaps to have some steps uh, up to there or uh, uh, make, make it easy for the cat to to access that sort of enjoyment um, and think about what what suits your cat well sometimes it's just uh, chasing a little bit of ribbon dangling from your belt as you do a little bit of housework or do things in the house will be enough stimulation for your older cat uh, or a little bit of play when you're uh, on the sofa together uh, in an evening so all this sort of stim stimulation I think uh, does help particularly before any dementia sets in if your cat suffers from severe cognitive dysfunction then play can be quite stressful for it but these are all things that are done more as a as a preventative really 
So in summary, um, as you will probably all have experienced, lots of cats are living much longer. The iCat Care, how old is your cat chart now goes up to 25. Uh, and, you know, occasionally I see cats older than that, but certainly there are lots and lots of cats uh, living to their 20s now, which is absolutely wonderful. Um, and that I think is, is due to good healthcare, whether it's the diet, the vet care, all these sorts of factors. But it does mean that our cats uh, also are more vulnerable to these old cat illnesses and also old cat deteriorations, some of which I think benefit from our support, whether it's just being there to help with grooming, offering a litter tray, keeping an eye on body weight, um, all these sort of things. And more tips will emerge as we go through uh, this series of sessions. So as a reminder of other resources available to you, relevant to this presentation, uh, the book on the website uh, that, is, that uh, fits with it is Caring for an Elderly Cat, which was written by myself and Vicky Halls. Vicky Halls is a very, very famous uh, feline behaviourist uh, from the UK. And so this book contains a mixture of um, health and behaviour advice um, for uh, carers of older cats and uh, maybe an interesting resource to complement uh, this webinar and uh, also as you know I do offer uh, referrals to cat owners so if you're looking for support with your older cats or your younger cats and think I could be of help then obviously feel free to get in touch. Next week's session is what are the common older cat illnesses so we will continue um, with that next theme but thank you very much for, for choosing to listen this afternoon it's uh, it's great to see such a, a lot of you with me thank you.